starting it up. Get to smash that like button. Subscribe. We need some subbies. Come on. You can do it. Late night. Woo. Goodbye. It's iconic. <laughs> I'm going to do my video real quick and I'll come back and look at your car. Gosh, oh, I don't know. I'm not on Twitter. We're on. Uh, if you want to watch live, we're on uh, it, YouTube or on Instagram. Okay. On the Porsche Life 111 channels. Porsche Life 111. That's right. Why did I sell my C3? <laughs> I don't know. Porsche Life 111. All right, and uh, I'll kill the bubble. Welcome back, everybody, to the late night playset. Tonight is time to change my glasses. Here we go. Got it. I thought I had it all down. I thought I had a whole system. But luckily, our, our guest this evening is promoting the show right now. And we love that. Bring it in here, Mrs. Hello? Hello. Hello to you. <laughs> Bring in the Instagram audience here. Hello to the Instagram audience. All right. Let's see. Rox Montreal is here. Mark Maskov, Kayla Marzo, Grand Impression. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Uh, tonight is Tuesday, June 1st. Holy crap, everybody. It's the sixth month of the new year. 2021, our guest this evening. You know him from Alias. You know him from Lost. You know him from Heroes. You know him from Star Wars. I don't know him from any of those things. I know him from Felicity <laughs> <laughs> and from Comic Con. We used to work together. It's Greg Grumberg. He's going to be here in a few minutes. Actually, right near. Is he over there? No, you can't see him anymore. <laughs> oh, it, there he is. Oh. <laughs> it's camera six. It's camera six. Is that my camera? No, it's camera six. If you look up to the left there, you'll see it. Where? See, we've got it hidden. There's a red light somewhere, and that's where the camera is. You don't see it? Well, look at that. We hit it well. He's good. He's good. <laughs> I see red light Mr. There. Comedy. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, you know what? That's the, yeah, you know what? He couldn't see his monitor. He doesn't know he was on. There we go. Here, look, look, look. The host is leaving the desk. There we go. Hey! There it is. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Portia Life 111. One. Okay. Yep. Right. Indeed. Wow. And in the meantime, we'll get through these announcements. Uh, on the hellos, Mrs., hello to you. How are you doing? <laughs> deal, deal with that. How's it going? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll deal with you in a minute, lady. Uh, you look beautiful. How are you feeling? Not beautiful. Uh, what a bummer. <laughs> well, 
I like that you're wearing your sticky vape shirt there because I have a choice for you. It is Tradecraft Tuesday. And as we do every Tradecraft Tuesday, we give you a choice. Tonight we have we have Dirty Heads, Lift Me Up, and we have uh, Kosher Kush. These are uh, one's an indica and one's a sativa. Kosher Kush or Lift Me Up. Oh, excuse me. Lift Me Up is Tangy X and Jack Herrera. Oh, I want that one. Well, okay. That's easy. I'd love Jack. Thank you, Trade Car Farms. Thank you, Thanks. Sticky Vape. <laughs> Thank you, Greg Rumper, who is who owns his own studio. By the way, we should say he'll be in here in a little bit. But he owns his own studio, uh, and he's um, he's already like, you guys should just come over and do this over here. So we'll, we might talk about that. I think, yeah. I think we'll talk. I think we'll talk about that. <laughs> Nothing would be cooler than being out of the dining room finally. Um, <laughs> here, you, here you go. <laughs> There you go. All right. Thank you, Sticky Vape. Thank you, Tradecraft. All right. Uh, our guest on Thursday was uh, Manuel Carrillo the third. Okay. He's the host of uh, Seduc- Seduced by Speed on Motor Trend. He was, he, was, he was a great guest. He came in here with booming energy. I thought I had to match that energy, and we had this nice kind of a ping pong thing going, really volleying back and forth. It was a lot of fun, great energy. And then he got what he clearly came here, got to what he clearly came here to say, which was some very important stuff about suicide prevention. <laughs> he, he really, really got vulnerable and, and really, uh, uh, um, I don't know, sh- showed his motor trend belly a little bit. Um, uh, he was very vulnerable with the stuff that he shared. And, uh, and I just want to say that we love you, buddy. We're grateful for everything that, uh, that, that you put into that appearance. I was totally taken aback. And watching it back, I'm just like, man... No one's producing this show, period, because <laughs> someone should have known that was coming. <laughs> anyway, we love you, buddy. And check out um, um, uh, Manuel's new show on Motor Trends called Seduced by Speed. A lot of fun. Uh, okay, real quick. I got some East Coast feeds. I only want to play – there's two. <sighs> there, there's three, but we'll save one. Two I want to play today because they sort of kind of a little bit – uh, dance around our, our guest today, and this was totally unintentional. So we're live right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. We are. We're live right Porsche now. <laughs> life 111. Porsche Life 111. Go there right now, guys. <laughs> Sorry. We need an audience coordinator. <laughs> that mic live if you want, by the way, over there. Uh, okay, all right. Too many things going on. What was I just saying? East Coast feeds. Okay, I got to do them real quick. Mrs. Ryan, East Coast feed. Uh, you remember where they were last time we checked in? Yes. Where were they? Disney World. Oh, you're right. Let's check it in again. <laughs> Bring it in East Coast feed. See where they're at. East Coast feed coming to you live. Here we go. Look who it is, Brooke in the Casman. <laughs> Craig Grumberg joined. See that? And where are we today, guys? Here's the question. First, the kid is back at the hotel because she got too tired of walking around. It's like one ride. But where are we, boys and girls? I can tell you. Big fucking ball must be Epcot. So that's where we are today on the East Coast feed, Orlando edition. This is this part of the East Coast we're in. Hey, do you want to say anything to the kids? At uh, home? Say, kids at home, anything? Not. I had too much hummus. Too much hummus. You <laughs> dropped an entire sangria. <laughs> in, <laughs> yeah, entire sangria in the uh, uh, Moroccan place. She did learn to like Moroccan food though, right, babe? Yeah, she did a very good job, and not just hummus. So there's that. Anyway, love you guys. Want to send some random love? East Coast feed, part two. Later. <laughs> is uh, is hummus Moroccan? Is hummus a Moroccan food? I, I would have thought Greek. I, Mediterranean. Mediterranean I Greek. I would have thought. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess Mor- Morocco's on the Mediterranean, also, isn't it? Sure. Oh yeah, geographically, cha- geographically <laughs> challenged. Geographically challenged. Thank you. That's much better. Oh, there we go. There we go. Years of practice. (laughs) Ah, there we go. Ready? Whoo! Totally worth it. Totally, totally worth it. Okay. Now, that was just them at Disney World. Suddenly, they were chilling. I have not watched either of these. This one looks like it may be significant to our guest this... I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Roll it. (laughs) Mr. and Mrs. Ryan, East Coast V, coming to you live from Disney Hollywood Studios. (laughs) Not in Hollywood, though, but in Florida. Look, Brooke and the Cats, man. We lost Coraline a while ago. She went back to the pool because she was fucking tired because she's four. But guess where we are? Can you guys guess? You can see by the background. Brooke, can you tell them where we are? Look what's here. Look who's really excited. It's the Millennium Falcon. Ah! And we just got off the ride, right, babe? 
you love the ride? Yeah. She's enjoying a $6 Coke. Um, we had the Rise of Resistance ride. I kind of finagled my way onto it. Works out quite well. Um, we bullshit. I lied a little, and it made us get on the fucking ride we waited all day for. But anyway, it was fucking awesome. It was like being inside the goddamn movie. And it, apparently it's really hot because we're in fucking Florida. Yeah. So anyway, Millennium Falcon, this is it. We're in actual Star Wars land. It's pretty fucking Show cool. I look, Brooke got a new hat. <laughs> Show me your hat, baby. Look at that, huh? Bad Batch hat. Pretty cool. I got my Stormtrooper shit and my Stormtrooper hat. And she got some t-shirts. We got some good swag. Anyway, that's about it. East Coast Speed coming to you live. The Star Wars land. Bye, guys. That's LMP high speed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody got that. <laughs> uh... Okay, everybody who knows me knows that I don't know a goddamn thing about Star Wars, which is unfortunate considering our guest is here this <laughs> evening, but we'll talk about that as well. Uh, in the meantime, we've got, a few, we've got a few bits of viewer mail to get through, uh, as well as this is the stuff you should go to Dual Shift and buy. You should check it out. Uh, here's a sticker pack up at GVBC. I came here to get it. Oh, well, I'll give you that. <laughs> well, here's here's yours. We'll just put that in your seat okay. from when you All get right. here. And uh, and we got your you got your t-shirts over here, and here's your dual shift cap. You can look like David and Guards Rad and the whole bit. That's what you do. Okay, with that, I've got a little bit of viewer mail because one thing arrived in the mail. And this came from the Casman, the guy we just saw down at Disney. And he said that something was coming, and we didn't know what. Oh, yeah, he said, he said, hey, you guys, was the hint. <laughs> all right, here we go. Now, I'm not into this stuff at all, but he is, and he loves to share the stuff that he's into with me. So here you go. It's a, these are called pops? Pops, movie pops. Actually, you probably know about this stuff, too, probably. All uh, these yeah, pops of, your, of yourself. <laughs> of course. Oh, my God, of yeah, course you pop do. Pop toys. Of course you do. That's amazing. Yeah, That's Wexley. amazing. I have a Snap you Wexley pop toy. You have come a long way since Felicity. Oh, yes, I, I can't wait. I cannot You're wait like to talk grandma. about it. I know. I, are you still on the show where they cut that girl's hair? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and then this was, we had a guest a week or two ago um, by the name of Lynn Woodward. She's a race car driver. She's, uh, she was a child actor. She's an actress now. She's a stunt driver. She does all sorts of stuff. But she came up to Breakfast Club the other day in a press car, and she gave us a lovely gift in the form of this good vibes only framed thing. It's very cute. And she was very honest about it. She goes, yeah, no, I found it at a thrift shop. I thought it would be perfect for you. <laughs> oh, geez. Roll it over the bubble wrap. It's a Larry David moment here. That was unintentional. All right. That is very gassy of you. Yes. <laughs> Pardon me. What did Letterman The Shrimp salad in the commissary. All right. The invoice, we'll get rid of that. Are we good? Let me get a pencil here, cross off some stuff. All right, Greg Grumberg's here, but he hasn't been in here yet, but we've talked about him. All right, manual, Disney World commercials. Shit, I got to do the commercials. But we did the viewer mail, got that out of the way. And uh, that's it. We're right on track. All right, real quick, commercials. Is there anything else? Am I, I feel like I'm going a mile a minute. <laughs> we did I hit everything? <laughs> I think that's it. Can't wait to relax when our guest gets in here. They say all that separates men and boys is the coverage for their toys. St. Clair Insurance is coverage for your toys. In this case, we're talking about collector cars. Guys, the market is all over the place. The value of your car is, is changed. I'm telling you, no matter what it was last year when you re-upped your policy, it's different now. The market's been everywhere. Um, most likely, it's gone up. Everybody I talk to has gone up. Um, it doesn't even matter. Some of the weird shit that you would think is totally valueless like all of a sudden there's a market for it because of things like radwood and the, <laughs> all the stuff that we used to throw away. Like, just give it to donate it. <laughs> Nowadays, it's like, oh, that's five grand as a roller. Like, what? What's happening? We have to talk cars. I can't wait. <laughs> Our guest wants to talk cars too. It's a good night for that because uh, we can tell him where to get his insurance. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> go get your car evaluated uh, and, uh, and then check out St. Clair Insurance because you want to uh, pick from all the new insurances once you realize that you've got a collector's item on your hands in that 87 Honda Accord hatchback. Um, go to CoverageForYourToys.com, CoverageForYourToys.com. CoverageForYourToys.com. When you're done with that. Oh, I can't do that one right away. <laughs> Let's do that one last. Need a lift lately? Cruise into a healthy 2021 with Cruise into a wellness CBD. Cruises with a Z. If you're into the CBD products and you're going to be placing an order from Cruise into Wellness, you're going to want to use that promo code. It's late night. Promo code late night for 20% off your order <laughs> at Cruise into Wellness.com. Cruise into Wellness.com. <laughs> they say, no, it's me. This is this one. Hi, this is Jay Ryan from 
late night playset reminding you to please like, subscribe, and comment below. This feeds the internet algorithm and eventually us as well. Be a pal and like, subscribe, and comment below. It'll be fire! I hate doing this part. Can't stand it. Can't stand it. Yes, I've got smoke. Wait, is that an indica? What, is, what, is, what am I smelling? Or is that bubble wrap? Oh, that's not It's whatever wrap. she chose. <laughs> we've got all the buttons. Uh, all right, we're going to talk about all this stuff in just a minute. Uh, we've got to do a quick break. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with Greg Romberg after these words from Oh So Delicious Hot Sauce. The hot sauce made by bears. Am I getting some sauce? <laughs> no, you're going to get some CBD. Uh, for being a guest in studio here today, Greg Romberg, you get a $50 gift certificate to cruisingtowellness.com. Cruisingtowellness.com. <laughs> cruisingtowellness.com. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh So Delicious Hot Sauce. More after this. Oh, so delicious. Right. It's a hot Sorry, sauce made by bears. Garlic and it's serrano mixed with love and care. Oh, you can put it on your eggs, pour it on your rice. It's great on a leg, it's better on a slice. It's oh, so delicious. It's a hot sauce made by bears. Oh, so delicious hot sauce. Great on right, everything in, except Greg oatmeal. Remember. Get your bottle today at oh, so delicious. Yeah, it's your time. <laughs> $1 from every it's bottle sold time. goes to the National Military Family Association. God, and then bring that over to you. This wherever, is my oh. You're comfortable. And where's so where's my camera? So can, but boy, these actors want to know where they're. I know. I, I need to know is. where to look, where you're, not to look. You're going to be five now, and I'll get rid of all. <clears> I'm five. camera five. Yeah, which is over. How there, many cameras do you have going here? Well, if we're going to count the Instagram audience, <laughs> it's seven, <laughs> which is too many, really, for a room this small. Seven <laughs> cameras. <laughs> wow. Okay. So I do not have a good side. So, so I guess all seven cameras are just capturing oh, me. Twist. No, no, no. You're, you're it's kind of like mocap. I think you'll like this. I think you'll like this. This is like mocap. No, I think we're all right. That looks good. I yeah. mean, yeah, you know, I, I, I used good. to be in the business. I know. So, so there's some exactly. things that I've picked up and, 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 and held on to over the years. Um, I want to just reminisce with you. First are of all, back? You for we're back? We're back? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Oh, hey, everybody, we're back. We're back. We're sitting here with Greg Rumberg. Here's the music again. Um... <laughs> First of all, I'm so excited that you said yes and that you came over. First of all, don't say that. I would do anything for you. Uh, this was awesome. I follow you. For you know, we, we used to work together years ago, but I but I follow you, and I'm so jealous every time I see. No, honestly, that you guys are out there with your cars. You're in Malibu. I I have classics. I want to talk about that because I don't have like what you guys have. You guys have the dream. I had a C4, I had a, a you know, 911 years ago. Were you ago. a Porsche guy? I am still a Porsche guy. I've had a 928. Oh, my. But I can't afford to be a Porsche guy. That 928, you can't hook anything up to it to see if it's broken. So it's, oh, right. if it's broken, it's like, well, let's just start fixing stuff. <laughs> and hopefully this will be, it's like a fishing expedition, you know? So <laughs> I, I wish I had never sold my, it was like a silver bullet. It was absolutely gorgeous. Well, what did you have? Because, all right, when we used to work together, I remember JJ had a, a 911 Cabriolet. I he think did. that was like a 4S too as well. Um, but that was what I remember from, like, I don't remember the cast having Porsches back then. No, no, stuff, no, no, you know? no. No, it wasn't back then. Not but you were, but you, were, you were into it. Like, I remember I was influenced by what JJ drove. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. And also JJ's dad had a Porsche. Uh, I, don't, I forgot what he has, but like, I think it was a 912. And it was just Ooh, cool. like, you know, you can go and you have the car that you guys have or you can, like a 912 is basically right. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's like a Volkswagen. Yeah. I but mean, it's very similar. so cool. Yeah. Those cars are just so beautiful and so cool. And I have become, uh, I want to open up a place called Practically Classics <laughs> because I, I want think, to be a member. Yeah. Because I think for, for most people, I think driving something that is practical is really important. And like, so everything, every every project I've been on, I try and, you know, somebody will steal, oh, I got to steal this prop from here or there. I take a car. <laughs> I do. I'm sorry. I like, I'm, I'm like, I want to buy that car from production. Wilmer guys, did that with the, uh, yeah. with the, with the, whatever the car, with the, the, the uh, Mark Brazil is a friend of ours. He's been here. Wilmer Valderrama on that 70s show yeah. bought the car from that show for the same reason. Exactly. And, and I, so if you remember on, I don't, people remember that on Alias, Bradley Cooper's uh, character drove a 69, uh, beautiful baby blue, 
uh, or they call it Brittany Blue uh, 69 Bronco. Wait, was your Bronco. character's name Bradley Cooper or was Bradley Cooper on Alias? No, Bradley Cooper Alias. was on Alias, if you remember. GTFO. Yeah. People don't no remember. He played, he played Will Tippin, who was her friend. She, she had two lives. She was a spy and then she was a student. And, and he played her friend. And, she, and he worked for a newspaper. That's amazing. But that car, 69 Bronco. Oh, super cool. Yes. And so I own that. And that was JJ's car originally, and then he rented it to production, then they bought it from him, and then at the end of production, it was sitting in the underground garage at Disney, because remember, we shot here, and then the next stage over was Alias. Yeah. So um, Transpo, they did something with the car, whatever, but it had no tires, no (laughs) wheels, no battery, no radiator. (laughs) Covered. Just sitting on blocks. Yes. But you guys, (laughs) you guys, if you saw that cover, you would have been like, that's a Bronco because sure. it's that square. Anyway, oh, my dream boxes. car. Yeah, and I knew that JJ had done this. So I bought it from Disney. And over the course of 25 years, I've kept it in the garage. It is my favorite thing. I was at uh, the Malibu parking lot. I was right across from the market. You, you know? were? Yes. And when? Like, the, like recently? Well, there was one out there that you ca- captured on video. Okay. But that wasn't mine. Okay. I think there was like a newer one. But anyway, I was out there because... Um, a friend was renting it to shoot something in Malibu on on the water, and I met him there. Cool. I, I, yeah. But anyway, I have well, come up to the Porsche next time. I know. Hang that's, out and say hello to everybody. That's what I I'm want sure to everybody do. would like to meet you. Too. No, it would be so cool. <laughs> um, so so I have '69 Bronco. Then my kids, when they turned 16, I was like, what, "What kind of car do you want?" And this shows you what a great dad I am. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. I want an Audi. I want a BMW. I want a, no. My son was like, I really – first, my, my uh, Ben, when he turned it, he's like, I want a Tacoma, and I've done my research. And a 2003 Tacoma, it, it really – it was overbuilt. They don't they didn't make much money on service. And blah, blah, blah. So he got a Tacoma, a baseball player, right? Loved it. My other son baseball Oh, player. yeah, so he played the stats. He played the stats on the car service and everything else. And he Which was like, is, this one makes the most sense. Right. He moneyballed it. Yeah, oh, I totally awesome. moneyballed it. That's awesome. Yeah, which is smart. smart kid. Yes. Yeah, hell yeah. So it is the same looking truck from um, Back to the Future, if you remember. Oh, of course. That, that, the KC lights. On it. That's yeah, it one, doesn't have the well, lights. Check out that 4x4. Four four. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hell yeah. Oh, my God. You're the best. And <laughs> then then Sam uh, turns 16 and he goes, oh, and then and Jake, who has epilepsy, can't drive. But he does drive, so I take him driving, whatever, in safe, oh, safe spots. No, no, no. Oh, I see. No, not not drive, drive. Just I know, like, but you know. you're. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. But you also paint the picture of like Rain Man and slow in the driveway, and it's like it's not that either. There's no, 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 somewhere no. Somewhere in the middle. Yeah, no. I mean, he can drive. It's just it's one of those things where he could drive. He just doesn't need to drive. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, in case he has a seizure or whatever. But he drives, and he knows how to drive. So we bought a, a '96 Bronco, which are really. I mean, that's the OJ. Is, it, it's not it is looking. still that. Yeah. Wow. That but must we didn't be buy the a white end one. of the run, right? Yes, it was. That was the last year of the Bronco. Okay. Yes, and and the first year it has an airbag. Oh yeah, of course. And that was it's going to barrel through anything that ever set it off. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what. But my wife was like, he, "Kids have to have an airbag." So, oh. so we, I was like, "All right, it's got to be a '96." Anyway, got this '96. <laughs> it matches the same blue. I'll show you pictures of my '69, and so oh, it's it's whoa. so cool. That's awesome. Then my other son goes, I want a Bronco. And I was like, well, okay, I'll sell that one. And Jake's like, don't sell that one. So I bought another 96 Bronco that I'm driving here today. So then, and I'm just going through this. I'm not patting myself. I had myself no the idea you were a car guy. This is Dude, like the you biggest have... bonus for our audience. This is <laughs> oh, so Oh, no, no, cool. no, no. Oh, wait, it gets better. Okay. I've been a ma- – and I, I, it turns out I'm a Ford guy. I didn't realize I was a Ford guy. Are you built Ford tough? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I am built Ford soft. Okay. I – um, love the old F-150s. I love them so much. And sometimes you see an old car. I'm sure you guys do this too. You see an old car and you go, oh, that's going to take some work. It's not sitting right. You just can see it. It's, yeah. you know, but it's, it, it, it's a lot. It's not just the shocks. It's just, it's the car has been a tired, tired, tired. Yeah. And then you see something and you go, wow, that's just sitting right. Mm. And yet they haven't done anything to the shocks or the suspension. Whatever. It just it just looks great. So I was in Long Beach for something, I think for work, and I drove and I get to a gas station. I look over and there's this this guy and he's just a proud uh, older dude and he's got and it's beat up. But it was an F one fifty F two fifty a seventy seven. I wish it was a seventy five because of smog, but it's a seventy seven and it just sat right and it's red patina's beautiful on it. Whatever bought it, took care of it. Is this uh, the Uncle Jesse? generation is that what it looks like like from it the looks, did you guys see a stars born 
No. no. Oh, <laughs> again with the Bradley Cooper. I know. <laughs> Boy. I know. Such well, Bradley, I'm in. I'm in that movie. Oh. Bradley. Bradley asked saying, me and to you're play also a role. Friends, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he asked me to play the driver, his driver in the movie. Right. Okay. His, he's a rock star. I play the driver. But your audience is going to go crazy right now when I tell him this. You guys, you're such losers. I know. Like, we, we were always working on the project. No we Star Wars. To watch stuff. No, no I know, Star Wars. I, I know. Anything with Star in it. Star Trek, Star Wars, <laughs> right, Star Wars. No, I'm in. Anyway. Um, no, so, Star Trek too. I forgot. So I drive my F-150. I bought it from that guy and I've been taking care of it. I drive it to set one day and I pull in and Lady Gaga's in the movie. You wouldn't know that because you didn't see it. Um, anyway, she's, oh, I'm aware. I'm culturally she's got, aware. She's got her. She's got a Lambo. She drove to to and she so she's driving that. Bradley's got a G wag. He's driving that, and which I knew, but whatever. And I pull up in this old and it's not beat up, but it's just so gorgeous. Yeah. And Bradley goes, "That's my character's car. I need that for the movie." And I'm like, "No, so no, 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 dude." It became a picture car. It was yes. the opposite of your normal movie. Yes. So oh, the audience is, right you now. you want to do it. Now you can rent it to production. Right, which is what I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's not cheap, buddy. That's right. It's going to be. a limited edition. It took me a long time to find it. <laughs> right. I was cruising Long Beach Boulevard. <laughs> right. I had to get some gas. I had to go to three gas stations <laughs> to get this. And uh, and so um, they rented it as his character's car in the movie. And it's very iconic. The end of the movie, I don't want to spoil it for you because you'll never see it. I'm going to watch it tonight now. You should my watch goodness. it. At the end of the movie, there's this really iconic moment. And uh, he pulls his truck out of the the driveway out of his house out of the garage close the garage the dog's sitting there my truck is sitting there it's so and i can show you that f- photo too but anyway i love these cars yeah. but they're all so all my cars are like a few grand and then i have to put a few grand into them every year you guys have the creme de la creme, de la creme. no you do those are beautiful i mean i wish i had a porsche one day i definitely want to have one again but when i look at the cars i have and i add them all up I could easily have a port. I just, oh yeah, <laughs> I'm just going. God, I love this. I love that. See, that's what I think. That's the right reason to do it. You're not in it for the collectability, of the money. Oh, this one went up a two hundred percent. I got to get rid of it now before it goes down to one fifty. Like, no, if you love it, why would you ever get rid of it? I agree. I agree. I'm that way too. Yeah. Our yellow car chose us. It's a it's a whole story. It was totally the Herbie Love Bug story. Like we were looking. But it didn't for have the, other it didn't things. have the numbers on it. No, but because of the story and everything, that became the persona of this car, and it sort of took us places. Because our life was, I mean, <laughs> you know, we used to be kind of Hollywood people, sort of yeah. on the fancier side of things. And when our life took a dive, like we became different people, sort of. And all of a sudden, like, the car people. didn't need to be cleaned every Friday at the yeah. lot and all that stuff. And it was like, I kind of like a little bit of scruff on there. It was like, it sort of looked like us. Like, we became weathered, so did the car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an avatar. Yeah, That's yeah, what I'm yeah, trying exactly. to tell you. It's an avatar. Anyway, yeah, no, no that, that car chose us. Um, so I that's love the only reason. That. It wasn't like... Uh, a monetary thing right right no but it's really it's fun i also by the way before i forget if he's watching he might be watching chris sonnenberg is a producer do you know I, chris uh yeah i think so if it's the one i'm thinking of glasses really buzz short hair he yeah he produces uh tangled the I series didn't, i didn't know that but if it's who i'm thinking of i used to know him and we used to cool. be really good friends in propping and commu- and like ghostbusters and shit like yes that. Yeah. great 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 guy he's an amazing guy i he i got a voiceover gig on on um what was it? I guess Tangled. And um, and I go in, and I'm in the booth or whatever. And before I'm recording, we start talking cars because I had driven one of my cars. And he was like, oh, I really like it. I have an old car, too. Afterwards, I'll show you. We oh, the hang on. Lot. Did he have a Mini? He used to have something. I can't remember what he it's, had. It was like a, a Valiant or something. Like, <laughs> okay. like a like a, like a cla- like Yeah. A, and anyway, so then I helped him buy something. And I ended up diving in. And the two of us own it together. 64 Plymouth Belvedere. And it looks like an animation, an animated car. It is so four doors, no no power steering, no power brakes, no side mirrors. Whoa. When we go to Bob's Big Boy, like yeah. we'll pull in, people are like, "Oh man," because they want <laughs> they want like genuine, you know, as absolutely as unmolested and as as real as possible. And it, like you can't use your cell phone at that at that. Uh, I'm sure in Malibu you can use it. So they don't want any because it's like throwback to the 60s and the 50s. Oh, you're whatever. not supposed to be on. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but what when, if it's your camera? You can use it for your camera, right? I don't think so. I've been there shit. once and they're like, put the cell phone away. Oh, that's funny because Bob's Big Boy has the contest. The, you know, the, who, the best show, uh, shot of the week uh-huh. gets put up by Bob's. I've won that's it. So I've won funny. it before. That's why they that follow us. That is so funny. I didn't know that. <laughs> Makes total sense. <laughs> <laughs> is it a terrible shot that somebody had to sneak, or is it? No, a real shot? no, they're usually amazing. Like with the neon at night, usually very like you know oversaturated. During one of the shit. car shows, usually, I mean one of the car shows. Wow. Okay. So well, 
they they were. They... But maybe they're not supposed to be cell phone photos. Maybe I snuck it by the guards. You know, exactly. <laughs> maybe it's supposed to be like a film transfer and um... yeah, or or a sketch, like an artist an artist <laughs> rendering. That's how far back they want to go. Um, <laughs> remind me of the Belvedere because I'm trying to think. What I was Christine? Was a Fury, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. This is. Uh, I'm gonna have to pull this up. Although probably. Christine wasn't actually a Fury, right? In the in in the if you get down to the technicals of it, it was actually a whatever the other one was at the time. And they dressed it up to look like a Fury because of like the color combo or something that wasn't available. Oh, really? Yeah, and that's why I was thinking. It wasn't it black. Christine. Christine was, was red. Oh, Christine was red. The car was black. <laughs> was black. Remember the car? Yes. And my mother, the car, which I just looked up recently because right, one right. of our guests was. <laughs> oh, Charles Grodin was on that show. That's what it was. Because there's my there's my '69. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, which I just absolutely love. Let me switch. Can you? Yeah, if you can hold that up right around here. <laughs> oh, there it is. Wait. That is awesome. That. So I think I did see that car in Malibu oh, like a couple weeks ago. Yes, it was there. Here's my Belvedere. Oh, that's cool. It's just see, a now, cool, that's not actually a cool. movie car because it could be any family car from yeah. any sitcom. It's on. It's on um, Venti. So I, I do rent. We do rent it for uh, What's productions. Venti? Oh, come on. Is it like a what? Turo, but for production? <laughs> it's for, for TV shoots, music videos, and stuff. You can rent your car. You're kidding me. No. And we probably helped create that with the DeLorean shit in the old days. Yeah. We used to get so many. Absolutely. We used to do charity things, birthday parties, weddings. Wait, I got to show you. Oh, wait. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> Balloons for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's I used so to wear funny. my big shoes. Honky, honky. Seriously? No. No. Okay. There was there was one guy, though, who paid me to put the Doc Brown hat on and get out of the Delorean, like drive up when he was proposing to his uh, his girlfriend, fiance. Do you still have the Delorean? No, no. We sold it in like yeah. 2012. And it's in England now. Actually, with, a, with a, a charity that they do like, what's it called? 501st, where you dress up in yeah, the Yeah, yeah, of course. And they, the go to, and they go to children's hospitals and stuff. I like bet that. I've seen it at Her- like, for London Hire. Film and Comic Con. And, and Heroes for Hire. That's our old one, yeah. Heroes for Hire. That's Here's for how it represents me. Well, there you go. That's our old car. JP. JP represents the car? They represent your car? Yeah. Wow, that's funny. All right. See, there's there's the blue and the blue. Here, I'm going to Oh, wow. Again. That's so cool. That's pretty neat. That's the... Okay, wait. Oh, oh. <laughs> see, there. there. 69 and a, and a 96. Yeah. Yeah, 96 is, awesome. is a beefcake, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it is a Brutus. It is a Brutus. It's so comfortable, though, for a big guy like me. I just love it so when much. When you fire it up, is it just one of those... <laughs> <laughs> no, because you know what? I don't like that. Mm. I don't like it. I want it to fire up the way it fired up off the, you know, out of the um, the showroom. It's yeah. just... Just that, that but engine there's still sound. a there's still a power behind it, right? Was yeah, three ninety two or something. Yeah, it's very strong. It's a very strong V eight, and it you know you drive past gas stations and they're like, you know, <laughs> and they love Come you. On in. Yeah, Come yeah, on in. they love <laughs> bring, me, man. <laughs> bring your camper. <laughs> so where are you guys on Prius? I mean, on on a Tesla. Do you like a Tesla? I don't. I don't have a problem with the concept of Tesla, but now that the Taycan's out, I don't see a need for it. What's Taycan? Uh, Porsche's version. Oh yeah, the Porsche Taycan. has their electric uh, sedans and wagons now, right? And um, they're killer, and I think they're better looking. The build quality is far superior. And it is. Porsche. And well, Taycan's. I mean, no, excuse me, Tesla's. I I like I like what they're doing. I like conceptually where they're going. Yeah. Um, it's not for me. I'm like an anti-screen guy. You're a Star Wars guy. It's probably perfect. No, I'm more the tactical. I mean, I want to. Oh, okay. Well, that's buttons. who I am too. Yeah, yeah. Like our car, we ripped out the stereo, the screens, the all of that stuff, the navigation. <laughs> nothing in there. It's all gone. Yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, because you were a purist. See, my my Porsche uh, did not have. Uh, Didn't have that stuff either. Yeah. Can I say Porsche or is it Porsche? You can say whatever you want, okay, but we're good. gonna look down on you. <laughs> I knew. I saw it. I saw it in her eyes. Like, Your oh, eyes. You were like, "Wow, you did it again." Ooh, you said it again. Cringe. Oh man. No, uh, we're not. We're not those people. Oh, not those <laughs> not okay. even a little bit. Okay. I have to say, some really, really cool people came up to me in Malibu. Um, you know, you, you go to a place like that and you go, "There's gonna be a lot of snobby people here." It's Malibu. <laughs> At the very least, you don't know what you're gonna get. That's true. That's true. I but mean, I, but it, I think you're safer making. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't want. I, I think I can't believe you judged anything. <laughs> no, no, no. no. But look, I, I was wearing. I was wearing my mask. It's not like people recognize me. And oh. every and there were people very, very really nice. I was like, oh, this is cool. Like no one came up and they were like, oh, 
What do you got? You got uh, Jeep mirrors on that because I've got these <laughs> Jeep mirrors. Oh, yeah. JC Whitney catalog? What's right. up with that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Parts geek. Yeah. What are you doing? I love it. What's going on? I'm down with Bronco that stuff. graveyard. Where are you? But I if know. it's cool and it fits, that's the part. That's right. the part I want on there. As long as you want it, who cares what anybody else wants? Unless it's an investment and you're turning it around. I totally get that. But I just, I just enjoy these cars so much. I really do. I love. So them. you drive all your cars? I drive them. That's that's the thing about you know practically classic. I'm I use them on a daily basis. I have. A 750 Li BMW. I cannot wait to Ooh, sell it. No, what year? Uh, it's an 09 <laughs> twin turbo. Oh no, yeah, keep it. Well, sorry, keep it. It's worth. It's worth nothing. I want to sell it, but it's worth like under ten. I know it's a shame. So, it's, so why? So, tell me, what would you do? What should I do? I don't want it, it anymore. You keep don't it. want it. Donate it. No, I mean. <sighs> I didn't. I didn't buy I mean, it new. You could at least get the tax write off for more than whatever it's worth. That's true. Maybe I will do that because I. I don't know what to do. My wife, you know, she likes it sometimes because it's nice inside. But it's the car that we get picked up in when you order a car to go to the airport. It's, it's a black like, car. Yeah, ugh, I know. It's just also, it's not when BMWs were really BMW anymore. No. They kind of went through a different thing there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I and mean, it's not the worst of it. But anything goes. You know the headlights. You know the headlights. The, they get foggy. The, the plastic yeah. gets foggy. Right. Yeah. New, just just take a guess at how much if you buy and it's aftermarket okay oh, aftermarket i don't know i would guess from dealership i would guess 1500 each oh that would be a deal really <laughs> oh what do you got the xenon 23 no not even xenon 23 2400 each i'm like i will drive only during the day if that's the case <laughs> why am i buying i mean anything goes wrong in this car and by the way Everything is electronically linked to it. I hate all. I that. hate all it. All in the compu- the brain, right? It's yeah. so bad, and and that's the knob. Yeah, I, I, I really should get rid of it. I'm telling you, I should get rid of it. Like I would Do much you drive rather- it at all. I mean, um, like- so my kids play baseball. One of them just left today to go to Alaska for baseball. For the um, he's he's D1 baseball player uh, at oh, LMU. Insane. Yeah, but he, he he's on the plane right now. He's on his way to Portland and then to Alaska for summer league, which is great. But. Uh, so my point is, we drive all over the place. I'm not going to drive a '96 Bronco to you know to Palm Springs for a baseball turn. Or no, I, no, I need something reliable. Yeah, but I can also I can buy the an comfort old Prius. of that seven series over I the know. Bronco. I would imagine on the Palm Springs journey. Yeah, I know. What would you buy today? Mm. New car? No, okay. I don't buy new. Okay, I, buy new. I love that. Yeah, I love that about that's used great. car equivalent Beamer. What I have. Similar type thing where you could have people, you know, four doors, but not if it breaks, it's if not going to kill you. Used, it's uh, you're not going to like it, but I'm going to say Lexus. Lexus used Lexus are just they're just so good. They make that LS the 400 or whatever the bigger yeah, sedan. Yeah, okay, one well, no, is. no, like, no. They're, I, just, they're just really good because they're Toyotas. They're just oh, really nice Toyotas. I know, but the if something thing, breaks, what about it? It's not going to be a fortune on a Lexus. No, it's all Toyota. It's all interchangeable with Toyota parts. That might be something they may give about. you a premium on the Lexus. It's not like a Porsche tax where right. everything's four times the amount. Or whatever. I had a GS and the Lexus are just they're just made well. I mean, I don't yeah. ever want one, but every time I'm in one, I'm like, God, these are good cars. I know they're so they're nice, really good. Cars. I had a GS four hundred or three hundred oh, years with the cool ago. Lights, the one with the weird lights and stuff. Yeah. I remember that. I mean, yeah. if I had one of those, if I bought that old, like found that year because I loved it. Yeah, and it was really comfortable. I remember that. That was a great, and it was kind of cool looking too. Yes, it was a little. Hot Roddy. Yes. Yeah. Like to drive that, if I had to go to Vegas for a baseball tournament or something, yeah. so those do well. you should find one of those. I know. It'd be a lot smarter. at least smarter. you like the used car you're driving. I know. That but, series just wasn't good. It wasn't good at that point. Okay, Cybertruck. Oh, it's never going to happen is my take. What are you talking <laughs> you about? you think it's going to happen? Without question. There are many. It's Sobel. I don't know if you follow any of these people online. <laughs> They're fanatical about it. I, I think know. it's the worst looking thing I've do ever seen. You think seen. it's actually going to happen? Yeah, I do. You really genuinely do? Yeah, it it has to. Why? Look, the F1 because the the Ford F150 all electrics coming out the Lightning, the, the I think this everything. Tesla truck I think was some weird kind of a market thing to prove that okay, we, people will buy these trucks and then it, and, and then it like got but the They got the so many deposit going. deposits from people. $100. $100. Yes. That's there's no commitment in $100. That's true. I mean, they give them the money back. It's no big deal. Could. They could. They could say, oh, you know what? Uh, it turns I out never this even, thing was a whatever. The, the, I thing, what, the moment thought. the glass broke when he threw the thing through the window, I was like, it's a gag. It's a joke. We're all being had. By the way, that's, a, that's a really had. good point. Maybe. And I think Do you Elon, like the way it looks? 
Not really. It would never pass I, I, a single DOT test with the <laughs> windows going all the way to a point in the front and everything. So that's the thing. Is like it's got to be full auto drive. Oh, that's true. But can you imagine the? You know how these? You know, a uh, what do they call the cars that? Um, oh my God! Self drive. No, no, no. When when a company does a spec version of. Oh, like a concept uh, concept car. I mean. You know, it goes from concept to production. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it always changes so much. Like the new Broncos that oh. are out right now. But, but, the, but the other but the, I had a conversation with somebody at the Peterson who's in the know. The other one is coming out. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. I know. No, it's coming. I but put a deposit But the one that's, the one that's on the street, I agree, is not What's what, the difference between that promised. and anything else that's on the street? It's, well, what they're, <laughs> did you see the movie Speed? Of course you did, right? Yeah. Isn't he driving a Bronco in the very beginning yes. when the bus blows up? It's like that Bronco. You know what I mean? It's like it's not beefed up. It's not no. duty. It's just like the run of the mill street Bronco. But it's yeah, it's just it's a it's every other SUV on the road, and they just slap the Bronco true. name on it. I'm like, this is not what I, I like. I'm I'm a Bronco guy through and through. Look, I've a couple different you know years, and I love it. And I was looking forward to the new one. I think they're going to come out with an electric one. Oh, that's a good point. That I would buy. The one that they came out with to me looks like the. Um, remember when they were uh, they were just badging over at Land Rovers and um, and Fords were the same, and it was the it was the <laughs> what the hell did they call the that Forza? thing? Forza. No, there was a there was a little time. It was basically the Ford Freelander or Free Freed whatever uh, the heck oh, that yeah. was. Yeah. And then they made a, a Land Rover. Ver- Maybe they called it the Freelander. That's what it was. But it was the Ford Escape, the Ford Escape, and the and the Land Rover yeah. Freelander. It was almost like a shared kind of a deal there. Maybe it's kind of car a companies did that for years. Yeah. They did that. So maybe there's like something like that going on here. Yeah. They're like, well, we had this platform. Let's just get it out there now. Isn't They've it been weird? waiting for years, and they're but, already giving us deposits. So let's talk. Let's talk about long lead time because this is driving <laughs> oh, yeah. me crazy. This was never the case. They never took deposits. They never did this, and now everybody's doing it. What corporate. about the Hummer? It became the, corporate. The Hummer looks so good. <laughs> the, the, the crawler. Yeah, the I know who's going to do that, but still, it's so cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. But I, you're gonna wait two years? I don't know what I'm. I don't know what kind of underwear I'm gonna wear in two years. See, I used to feel that way too. But the older I get, I feel like two years is like I woke up from a nap and it's two years later. You know, it's like That's everything true. happens so much quicker now. I know, but would you take your? Oh, it's only hundred dollars, like you say. But would you take yourself? Well, the Tesla one's hundred dollars. I don't know what these other ones were. They're they're hundred dollars. They're yeah. all hundred dollars. But um, <laughs> see, back to Rain Man, about hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm just looking at it and I'm thinking. There, and there is no commitment, but in my mind, there's a commitment. I'm like, okay, I'm looking forward to getting this car in two years as opposed to I'm going to take my imagination now off these other cars. I don't want to do that. But I want to buy it st- now. That's, you're still going for the emotional attachment of the thing. People yes. aren't doing that anymore. That's true. Like, people are like, ah, oh, what's the return on investment? And all that <laughs> shit. I'm like, wow, you, it's money ball in life. And I'm like, I don't want to live in that world. Yeah. So Can I'm we still talk about your shoes ownership. for a second? Sure. Those are so cool. ShopHunziger.com. ShopHunziger.com. Shop Hunziger? <laughs> yeah. Nicholas Hunziger is a auto- fine automotive artist. His paintings are at Porsche, in the lobby at Porsche. And oh, wow, museum wow. And stuff. Okay. And, uh, and he has a automotive clothing line as well. So those are driving shoes? Yeah. They're really cool Ironic, looking. Ironic, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I like those a lot. They're way too... Th- I, have, I, I need... Uh, these are... Uh, called Air Force One Flynets, and the Flynet is the flexible. I have just wide feet, and so I love Air Force. But that's a Nike product, right? Nike. The Air Force One. Yeah. The yeah. only have you done work with them in the past? Ever? Nike. Yeah. Uh, they used to sponsor and like or give. Yeah. You know all that products. Stuff. And stuff. Products. Yeah. Um, you know who Magnus Walker is? Yeah. Why do I know? Looks him? like Rob Zombie, long beard. He's a Porsche oh, yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Outlaw. Of course. And he's got the cars with the different color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He just got a Nike deal, and they're just putting out a two seven seven shoe. He just was wearing them to Breakfast Club last week. They're just they're are amazing. they are like they ten thousand cool? pairs? I think. Uh, uh, yeah, they're really cool because they're totally distressed. They look like an old out of the box. They they're look like Air an, Force One. No, it's a different. It's a different. It's not Air Force One. It's a different, but it's a Nike product of some sort. Ooh. And it's very cool because they're all old school eighties leather but they look like it was an 80s shoe that you just found out of the box they're all that crazy distressed like they were in the garage totally just wow but they're brand new and clean that's so cool but they're, they're super amazing. cool i, I didn't mean to, to take away from your i may, I may have to come out to the breakfast you, club and uh you should especially since you've got a bunch of cool cars yeah yeah so that was my question it doesn't matter what i bring no okay no and then where up in the mountains do you guys go where, <laughs> it's, where always, is that? it's at newcomb's ranch oh it's this place although it's closed because of covid and maybe even sold i didn't get to talk about that we'll talk about it on thursday uh but it's just a little roadhouse that isn't even open where fraser doesn't have an address no no uh up angeles crest angeles crest like up the two angeles forest highway yeah that's far 
Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, my God. It's like 40 miles from the bottom. How up often, a windy road. Yeah, how often do you guys do that? Every Friday. Well, that's from what 9 I to thought. 11. <laughs> Every Friday. And we stay till 1 or 2 usually. And who brings the Dunkin' Donuts? Because I see that on that, the fin of we, the... We pick it up, but other people contribute. Either they might give us a couple bucks that they want and or they may bring other things. Sometimes people bring savory treats as well. Sometimes there's that's bagels. so great. It's, like, it's sort of like a potluck thing that just it, it turned into something. It was totally an accident. We didn't intend to create it. Oh, you created it? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Well, because of life change and all that stuff, yeah, we yeah, started, yeah. and we got this car, that Herbie the Love Bug thing, it started taking us up to the mountains on Fridays. Nice. And that became a thing, and then you post on Instagram, and first year, it's like five or six people, and then more, and then more, and then over COVID, it blew the hell up. It did? So how many people show up? Over 100. 100? I mean, the, you can't fit a car in the parking lot anymore. And, and, and the, where you guys stop? Are they just doing a killer business when you get there? No, because it's closed. So why? In fact, we thought we were kind of doing a good deed by like keeping the thing right. alive while they were. And then, oh, when they come back, and then we'll have all these people here to buy breakfast. Yeah. And, and they, they closed over the break. <laughs> and and closed for good over the break. Yeah, like we heard it was already sold, but it's definitely for sale at the very least. Okay. Wow, that's just depressing. I know. I'm trying to. T- I'm talking to Matt Farrell. I'm like, we should fucking buy it, and we should buy it. We should figure it out. We should make a bed and breakfast up there. I don't know. We should do something. Yeah, or at the very minimum, you should be selling donuts and coffee or something like that. Mm. I mean, should, at the very least, it should be a restaurant again. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um. God. All right. Well, you should just be a regular car guest since you live locally. We got to talk about Weirdos Pizza. I want to reminisce. <laughs> Weirdos Pizza. I discovered <laughs> through you. Yeah, I know. And what do you yeah. think? Did you like it? I loved it. And then, uh, then I got a hold of him, and I, I talked to him, and I was like, I said, can I give you notes? Because I'm a, I'm a big pizza guy. Yeah. He was like, absolutely. He and his wife, so sweet. Yes. You know them. But yes. I, I mean, I was, I love the well, story. I know them through their pizza. Through I mean, their pizza, like, me too. Okay. But I mean, I, I said, I go, you know what? I'm a really thin crust pizza guy. I love thin crust pizza so much. Now. I didn't the, have the guts I didn't have the guts, but that would be my one note. You just that would to, be my you just one have to note. Ask. He oh, said Papa he'll do it. So great. And he'll do it for you. He's I haven't so asked great. yet because I'm on this diet, which we'll talk about. Yes. But he will do it. He said you just have to ask. I will definitely go thinner for you if you, if you want. He and said he'll do gluten-free if you want that. And he said he'll do, what's the other one, uh, vegan if you want that. Wow. I was pretty impressed with both of those things. He's I just love that it was. accommodating. Yeah, accommodating. And, and also, you're picking it up from a mechanic shop. I'm like, <laughs> yes, please. Dude, before you started going, I used to pick it up from their house because I didn't know. It was just the thing at first, and then you go the first time. And yeah. It was, it was up the street in one of the condo buildings. <laughs> and the story's great how their kids moved out here, then they moved out here, and they didn't have anything to do. And they were like, Dad, you should get back up to that restaurant. It's inspiring, actually. It's very inspiring. What like, it is... might be a Netflix movie in 10 years. Right. What's the – where are they? Because I, I didn't go around and look in the front. Is it a restaurant's – kitchen yeah yeah it's there's a space in the front i guess but is there a restaurant that's open in the front i don't think so wow i don't think so there was like h salt fish and chips was over there oh yeah it's yeah, yeah. The, the intersection's famous from lethal weapon too that's I, what i always yeah, know yeah, it from yeah. when he jumps over they ruined the commercial so i used to have up the street now there's a tea place on vineland okay okay i think it's called 50 50 vineland i think it was the address i'm almost positive there's a lot of weed places on vineland there is is. (laughs) there is you know you know where the barrel is yeah yeah okay so that's where i was talking about idle hour yeah idle hour so you go up the street from from that on the right there's a bunch of dilapidated yes what the fuck are these these this a lot of mechanic building graffiti built but on the on a corner now they sell teas for years my band band from tv was inside this storefront we took it over. You shouldn't be. No. And then I was like, Slumlordville, I'm not paying you anymore. So we bought a building in North Hollywood, right up the street from here. This is how you This is Th- how you built your studio? This is why yes. this all came to be? Yes. 5,500 square foot boat trust building. Beautiful. The building next door is for sale. I wanted to, which you guys, ha- I've seen you, um, the, the kennel, the car kennel. Auto kennel, yeah. I was like, auto kennel. Like uh, That type of thing could be the, good there, and we could shoot there, but... Anyway, the building right next door is for sale. I've been trying desperately. I, 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 don't, I just haven't pulled the trigger on buying it. It's expensive. <laughs> yeah. But our building is, we've built it out. It is state-of-the-art, 40 camera, 40 input switcher, high, high-level everything. Um, and we uh, the band rehearses there. It's a full uh, streaming I, and recording. You sent me like and, a little sizzle reel for like, I assume probably for your rental yeah. customers and stuff. Yeah. Um, I would love to come check it out. You have it to looks come check like, it out. You know, as a 
product as a fucking tech nerd is a nerd for this type of stuff yeah it's like candy land it is it's like to- this is our <laughs> this yes. is our dining room you built the whole building around that sort of methodology yes and my wife does it doesn't have to say you're not putting that up at our house because i put it up at, at, at the building you don't even have to worry and about by the it. way it's now uh, we built with shipping containers we built uh my office is in a shipping container in the parking lot because we're doing so much production and renting inside and when people like when someone like you comes you don't want to see stuff already so you want to see a relatively empty space that you go okay i can build this there right and so i i was like okay my office became this the uh you know it's so state of the art. It's like this when the Super Bowl they pull those trucks up and it's like all the monitors and the, yeah. and the graphic station, the music station. Oh, we have everything. We have everything there. And so that used to be my office. Now I'm in the parking lot in a shipping container with a deck. I love it so much. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I would love you guys to come by. Yeah, it's, I can't wait. It's awesome. It's really awesome. I want to produce there. That's amazing. Do it. Let's go. Um, Felicity. Felicity. <laughs> I worked on Felicity season two, which yes. was. Maybe a little bit beginning season three too, but it was bef- it was right when um, we were in those warehouse studios. Yeah, in and La- in La Cienega, where the office shot. No. Oh yeah, watch old office episodes. You're shitting me. They La Cienega it Place, here. remember? Oh, that's funny. I didn't know that. Look at the episodes. They shoot in the parking lot when they look down from that window of yes, the bu- it was the, the, production- the walkway and everything. Yeah, the, but the production offices are their offices. That's a riot. And then down below is where Craig Robinson and all the guys, where we used to shoot, in there they set up uh, you know, the warehouse part of it. That's amazing. She worked with, well, you know, Craig Robinson and uh, Rain Wilson from that show? Mm-hmm. Oh, God, yeah. That's crazy. And Corral early on. Oh, that's right. On yeah, what? About that. The, uh, office. the office. On the office. That's right. Oh, Sorry, you God. might not even remember. Last time we all saw each other was probably Comic-Con, I'm guessing, all of us either stuck in an elevator for a party or, oh, yeah, or yeah, with yeah, yeah, yeah. Children's Hospital or something. Yeah. Um, and then I was trying to think, did I run into you? Were you at, <laughs> forgive me if not, were you ever at a Maxim 100 party? I went to one I'm of those with sure. Craig Robinson, and I feel like that was the last time we saw each other, but it was the drinking days for me, so I don't remember uh, every single second of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I haven't seen I haven't seen Craig. I've talked to him a few times, but I haven't seen him in a long time. We're trying to get him to do this show. Every time we do, he's like, I love you guys. <laughs> That's what he says. Corker's going to be here on uh, Thursday, though. He is? Yeah, which would be cool because he's hosting Top Gear I now. know. It's huge. <laughs> so with Dax, have you seen the show? I love it. Yeah, it's, it's so... I feel like whatever they're doing, they captured the relationship that we haven't seen since the original guys. Yeah. Not yeah. that they're emulating that, but like... No, but it's in, they... in their own way. There's some times when I'm like... Guys, get on with it. It, it moves kind of slow at times. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not excited. I would tell them that in a yeah. second. I'd be like, Dax, okay, you don't have to over-explain. <laughs> like the original show, the original show did, on their show. I do agree. They, do I they think... go back to a warehouse full of people? No, not on this one anymore. I know. It's yeah. like I, I feel like the interaction. They need it at, at times. Well, the funny thing is, like no, when they built that track. Did you see the episode they built the track? Yeah, that was a treasure. Like, the fuck is that? <laughs> well, and then it wasn't. And I it know. Wasn't. It, was it was just so written. Th- it was just written. I know. Uh, the thing with those guys, I think everyone who's tried to emulate the the do the studio show and everything else, they never had the right either the right lead guy or the right trio of people or whatever. Ironically, they have the guys who ah. could probably support that format now. Yep. And I think maybe it's just a matter of let's see how season one A and B do. Season one A did well enough that they greenlit two before it was even close to air. That's good. So, I mean, I would say maybe they're pumping money at it. I would love to see a studio show. <sighs> Why aren't you doing a car show, you guys? This is uh, America's favorite late night car show. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about like on, on Motor Trend. Like, what's your favorite show on Motor Trend? Uh, I have oh a good gosh. one I'm, I'm watching now. I've got, I've got a lot of favorites, but you know what? I actually, it's funny you say that because I didn't even tell you this, but I got an email today about somebody who was looking to cast another, a new really? car show. Yeah, that thought I might be a good fit, so we'll see. As a host? Yeah, it's probably way too soon to be talking about it. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, but Simply I mean, had a conversation. Why am like, I not going out? But that? like, I would, I would totally forget do that. you. I want to, I want to let's host it together. <laughs> Here, here's <laughs> let's host it. Uh, who knew? I had no idea you were such a car oh, I, guy. I love so the car show that I love is uh, Car Issues. Have you seen it? No. Is it therapy Come with on, car guys, owners? Guys, guys, no. It's so <laughs> up our alley. You okay. guys are gonna love it so much. It's this guy. He's very good on camera. I mean amazing 
middle of the country, not not L.A., whatever. What makes him great? On Do you mean like he's just, just natural, authentic? Yeah, yeah, he's so authentic. I love that. And he he says, he, he says, look, I see a car and I just have to have it. I've got car issues. And he, and he buys what you were talking about at the beginning of the show where it's like these things have gone up in value. He has a guy that he calls um, the professor or somebody. It says mechanic. He'll go and buy a car. Great deal. Pays cash. I don't know who's behind it. Motor Trend is definitely not giving him a big budget. No, no, but he but he pays for cash for the car. Like he'll get a, like an old uh, yeah, anything, and and he and he's like, I just love these, like an old Mercedes or whatever. And he's like, I just remember, and he and he, he's so nostalgic, nostalgic about it, but in a way that all of us remember, you know, like yeah. really smart. And then he goes, and this thing's got a lot of kick, whatever. And then he'll take it and do stuff he shouldn't be doing, like driving whatever. And then he takes it to his mechanic. And his mechanic is like, all right. And then he looks and he goes, it's going to be about $4,000 to fix this car. And he goes, I just paid $3,500 for it. <laughs> so then the stamp comes on the screen, like sell it or keep it. And some oh, of them- Oh, like the Myth- Mythbusters applause. Yeah, like- and, Oh, boom. sure. And then that's it. And then he moves on to another car. It's a great I, formula. Just say you're welcome because you're going to love this <laughs> show. It's a great formula. Um Chris Jacobs and I, Chris is a buddy, and now yeah, us I'm, too. Yeah. He's been here. We love Chris. Oh, he's been here. Well, That's he's, so great. he's local too. Yeah, and so we're we have a couple car ideas we're trying to get off the ground. Oh no shit! Yeah, we should really talk, cause dude, my building, like we could shoot whatever we come up with. We can shoot it. I love I mean, it. You can do it too, but uh, my, my building, you can drive a car in. Yeah, no, it's, it's better. better. Awesome. What are you saying? I can't do it in our dining room. Yeah, exactly. Like SNL, we got to cut, cut it in half. So we bring it in. Where, where did all this come from? So do you know this is the legit, like this is the old Letterman desk, microphone, those That's chairs. what I thought. Yeah, yeah. No, it's legit. Where did you get it? From a museum in Queens that the show gave it to in the 90s when they got a new set. Like this is the one from you... the very first night with Bill spray painted, Bill Murray spray painted Dave on the front. This is the one that Drew Barrymore did the How did you find it was available? How did you buy it? Dude, craziest if you want to know, I'll tell you. I mean, our audience is probably bored as hell. I don't, but just, just we give were, me we that. were, we were, we thought we were, we were trying to do an event, um, or we were thought we were going to do an event with Letterman in New York City, and we found out through somebody randomly that maybe uh, Desk and Chairs was still actually like alive and available. Because remember, this shit was in the dumpster, and everybody yeah. was taking parts out of it, and Chris yeah. Gethard had like the bridges on his show and stuff. I remember, yeah. Um, so I kind of thought like this is probably a mistake. Like, there's not really anything. And they're like, no, contact this museum in Queens. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I reached out just totally blind to whatever. And I got an email back a month later from some woman. And uh, I was like, I was just trying to see if we could rent the stuff um, for this event that we were going to have Letterman at. And, uh, or, or at least access it, get pictures, like so that we could replicate it or whatever, research it. And uh, one thing led to another. And she was really nice and helpful. And then... The thing ended up not even happening. I think the production the company pulled out. Yeah, whatever happened, like it, 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 whatever happened, it just literally went away. And the lady reached out again, and I said, "You know what? Everything's up in the air. I'll reach out when I know more. I don't want to waste your time. I'll reach out when I know more." And then, like a year, nothing, because we moved on to other things and whatever. And then, like a year later, she was like, "So we're looking to make some room, and uh, the museum's looking to find a new home for the desk and chairs. No. Is, do, is there still any interest in the Letterman assets?" And I was like, "Yeah." So I had to jump through a bunch of hoops. It wasn't like just, oh, here you go. Was it expensive? To, no, but we did have to do a lot of paperwork and stuff. And um, Promising you wouldn't resell it or something? No, no. Just more of like, what's it going to be used for? Oh. It was weird. Like, they did, didn't want it just to end up in, like, somebody's basement, right. I think. <laughs> because, Irony. Because I, my, bu- my good buddy owns everything else. I was going to ask you, is it James Commissar? Yeah, James Commissar. Yeah. Commissar, okay. Yeah. I he, don't know him, but, oh, oh, but he do. does have the Skyline, which we've been trying to pair oh, with Oh, he the has desk. the Skyline? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So James owns everything. <laughs> Roseanne Couch, no, no. Cheers Bar, e- everything. Tonight Show set. Everything. everything. Yeah. I, it's crazy. And 25 years ago, or now longer, 30 years ago, he started you know, uh, collecting this stuff. And he's I mean, He's really, starting a museum close. or something, right? Yeah, the Museum of Television, but he, but also um, he has recently sold off a couple of uh, some really big pieces. But he owns Mor- Mork's Egg, some of the classic things. Um, he owns the Breaking Bad Meth Lab. He owns the set. He owns when 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 um, uh, George Burns died, because James preserves all this stuff and doesn't sell. He, he he wants to keep it all together and everything. The Burns family gave him his hair, 
his glasses, his teeth, wow, and his cigar collection. And it's all like that an stuff. archive. Yeah, he he archives it all. But he, I mean, like I'm sure he knows that you have this, doesn't he? I don't know. I tried to when we were originally getting it. I sent him like a Facebook message or something, and it was like, <laughs> I think he was he was a little cagey. <laughs> it was like I think he probably gets messages all the time. Yeah, but he's, I would imagine he is a he might, wonderful guy. He might not have known. Like it might have sounded like bullshit at first or something. I don't know. Right. But he was like too many messages and one I'm going to block you and I was like okay I'll just fucking have a good day like sorry exactly yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and you never know what someone's going through so I did, there was no judgment yeah. about it but like I never reached out again either so I, I had the, the show I mean he and I are really really good friends but and he's really a charitable guy too he's wonderful but um, uh, when I did the show with Kevin Smith called Geeking Out on AMC guy I want to talk about that's on the card it's on okay, the card yeah, yeah, let's yeah. hear about it um, <laughs> but uh, so Kevin Smith I, I had an opportunity to do a show and I was like I want to do a show that shows how geeky I am about this stuff. I go to Comic Con, I walk around. I mean, I love meeting unmasked. people, unmasked, um, and I love, and I, I don't mind getting stopped. I, it's fine, you know. And and also, it lets people know I'm there, <laughs> so they come That's back true. to my table. It's like advertising. That's true. But I, I, I you walk, are your own PR. Yeah, I don't. Want, I can't sign when I walk around, which people are bummed. I don't even take a picture with them because I'm there. They pay me to be there, right? So I have to anyway. But um, people uh, have to get that though, right? They get it. Okay. They get it. The people that are there, they get it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I was like, I love the access that I have. Like when I was on the, when I was in the Millennium Falcon, I mean, you wouldn't know anything about this because you don't know about Star it's Wars. It's the big round disky one with the pointy thing in the sure. front. And, uh, um, but, wow. yeah, but when I was just, I was a kid in a candy store, I was like, I can't believe I'm an X-Wing pilot. Like, what in the world's going on? It is on? nuts, because that was your childhood, right? Yes. Like every other kid? Yes. I loved Star Wars growing up. I loved it. Um, JJ and I both went to see Star Wars, He, you know, independently, and then also together at the Avco Theater in Westwood. Here we were you in were London. You were friends back then? Oh, yeah. We were five. Four, you and JJ? Four and a half. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. had no idea. You I mean, a, you were always friends on- You have a great research on... department. I'm sorry. Um, I'm I, sorry. No, no. I, I love telling you. But, I, I mean, we you. even worked together on that show, and I didn't know that. Yeah. Like, yeah, no. Since I thought. We were yeah, five. I mean, like Tiffany Rockamore. I knew he knew her for years and years, but like you know, uh, that's amazing to me. Oh, he isn't. Any, Tiffany's a, a young friend compared to me. You know, that's amazing. we were. No, we grew up together. All of JJ's Super Eight movies that he made, I'm in, I star in. Like when I was nine that's and the ten. Coolest. And um, this is a crazy story, which I, I'm sure. I you, didn't mean to make that a whole. Like I. No, <laughs> I, I, I love it. I just it. popped your balloon of what you were talking about. No, and now we're talking about this. No, 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 no. Are you kidding me? I love this. Um, that uh, JJ and Matt Reeves both, uh, you know, who co-created Felicity together, they were 12 and 13. We were all making movies together or whatever, but they were making them. I was acting in them and they were making them acting. <laughs> whatever. It's like stand there and be funny or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, they, um, uh, there was a... Public... It worked out, buddy. I... <laughs> Don't make fun of it. it no, no, it did. Okay. You're right, you're right. <laughs> um, they were part of this uh, competition for young filmmakers and then a guy named Gerard Ravel, whose budget was probably three times this um, on public <laughs> access, um, had a great show and it was all about kids that make movies. Oh, so shit. guess what happens? Kathy Kennedy, who was oh my working God. with Steven Spielberg at that time, sees it and goes... Oh, oh, because, and she tells the story, some guy who moved into the same house that Spielberg grew up in found his movies when he was a kid. Come on. In a box! No way. In the attic! And was like, uh, and he was, he was a nice enough guy that he contacted Spielberg and said, I think I have your movies from you were a kid. You probably need these. Yeah. Didn't want to try and not, sell them or not anything. Here, can you have, give me $10 million for them? No. Right. Kathy was like, uh, so the way she tells the story, she was like, um... I don't know if this is real or not. If you if they're real, just bring them to the studio. He they <laughs> come he to comes, Amblin. Yes, at <laughs> Universal comes. I don't even know if it's Amblin. It may have been before that. We were 13, 12, 13. <sighs> anyway, brings the movies and says, "I just want you to have these." Whatever. She then happened to also see that the story on JJ and Matt. So says to Stephen, um, "You should have them restore it because they're working on it." Cut to JJ's bedroom. Where I, you know, we, we, I mean, we were just best friends, and he and Matt are on the ground splicing Spielberg's movies when he, from when he was a kid, and I'm like, can I just have a frame? Yeah, just, just a frame. Give one cell. And they're like, nope. Those all the, all the trashy cells went <laughs> went into a box. They give it back. I mean, it was, and to know that now JJ's was producing, you know, Clover um, uh, Super Eight with Spielberg, and yeah, now they're on par with each other. I mean, JJ's reached, you know, it's it's just such a great story. It's a great story, but great story. I. Did, I <laughs> I know no it's idea. so cool, but that, it's exciting you're, for me to tell you. It, that's, I mean, that's it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's amazing. 
But better than anything else in the whole world. These guys would like go have lunch together and stuff. Like nobody, JJ was like the head of the show. He wasn't JJ Abrams yet, but he That's still it. had done oh, fucking, but, forget, you know. Uh, oh, the, he's the greatest. The forever Young and he'd Armageddon. I mean, he was still yeah. somebody. But this is, this is what I was Never. just about to get to is um, we've gone through major, major stuff in our lives. Okay. Very similar to what you guys have gone through. And you re- very quickly see who your real friends are. Nothing against people that can't handle major life change and major things that happen in your life. But when your son is having brain surgery and you need to call somebody and you need, you know, J.J. has been, I, more than any, everybody was like, God, he's so lucky to have J.J. Abrams as your best friend. I'm like, mm. not for anything in Hollywood. I, you're absolutely right, but for the person that he is. And he's just the best. And you need to have somebody that you can call that's not going to, I mean, do you, how fucking sick are you guys of sympathy? I can't stand it. It just immediately tells me oh. that they don't know what's current. Yeah. So then I- And they mean well. Totally. Always. Everybody always means well, means yeah. well, but like, I don't have the energy for anything anymore. So that's so low on my list and I don't want to be a dick, but like, he gets the brunt of everything, and yeah. he can't take it anymore either. So, even, even somebody going, how do you do it? <laughs> how do I do it? Yeah. Like, my son has a seizure, and, you know, I mean, for people that don't know, Jake is 25, thank God. He's living well with epilepsy, uh, you know, with his medication, and he's on he's on CBD, but he's on a, the, pre- the prescription. It's called Epidiolex. It's the, mm. you know. but High test. It's the pharmaceutical version, yeah. yeah. But he, um, thank God, he's doing well, but he's still can have seizures and, and does have breakthrough seizures and whatever people just don't get it they just don't get and fine i mean if you don't get it you how don't get you it doing <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. how do you and elizabeth do it you're amazing parents and we're not trying, amazing parents what the trying. fuck are you guys supposed to do what are you supposed <laughs> to do not myself. get up in the morning that's my response fuck you that's i'm my living response. my life yeah we're doing the absolute most that we possibly can every single day which is more than most people do <laughs> I mean, seriously, I'm jealous. I watch you guys and I go, my God, I want to go up to that mountain and I want to do the things you got. I mean, you guys, look at this. I mean, my God, Thanksgiving must be a hoot in this oh, room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pass the turkey. Exactly. Oh, my God. Pass the turkey, but look into that camera. <laughs> But I, but seriously, I and and I didn't know anything about MS. I didn't know what you were going through. I was just like, I, I that's why I said yes to this. First of all, I've known you, but I was like, this is awesome, man. This <laughs> oh, that's is amazing. so awesome. That's I so love cool it. So, how long have you been doing this? A couple years, three years now. Three years, and it, but it, not this. It was like it's been different versions of it. It was us with two microphones from Amazon at the dining room table at first. You right. know what I mean? And then it, then we got the Letterman stuff and then it looked like the Seinfeld episode with just the Letterman stuff in the apartment. So then I had to like micro TV studio the whole place out so that the lighting all looked right so that this whole thing God. actually, you know, forced perspective, a set and all that right. stuff to make it sort of work, you know? I, was this just, I, I'm going to go to Kinko's and blow stuff 100%. up and put... Oh, it was like Amazon party, party stuff. Because it looks so good, especially on camera. Uh, and only, what is only this? On camera. You have like a laser thing going? <laughs> well, what do you mean? <laughs> what do I mean? <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. It's really great. It's ridiculous. It it's is ridiculous. ridiculous. <laughs> it's straight up ridiculous. But why not? I, I mean, that was what thing. else are you doing today? During COVID, it was like, look, if we're going to do this thing and really go at it, that our, our the thing that makes us like our kitschy, catchy thing is that we have the Letterman set. So it was like, Let's just lean into it. Here's the thing that I'm proposing. Um, I don't know. You guys probably want to keep it here. But if you Not did. Not necessarily. Okay, if you did do it at my building, um, the idea of having. Because we we do a lot of. Uh, we'll bring in like 25, 30 people. And we have cocktail tables. I'm doing it right now with Tom, with, uh, Tom Papa. He has. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. I used that. to work with him. Yeah. yeah. You just work with Tom. Tom's the greatest. We have a, uh, we have a comedy show that we do out of the building. And because we, we have a bar. Yeah. So we go, you see, I want to do all of this. Yeah. I mean, how great would it be to do this show with a cocktail hour? Like with a, a little... co- well, or not even cocktail, but just having people. Absolutely. So you can have a reaction from the audience. It's great. That's yeah. why we started getting it. It's, it's not, we're not doing very well tonight because I haven't checked in. I'm so happy to see you. Uh, Warren Amore says, uh, looking good, guys. Uh, Jeffrey Giordano says, happy birthday, June 19th. Is that you? Nope. Okay, nope. <laughs> nope. July 11th. But happy birthday to Ken Lowenberg if he's watching. Ken and I, uh, we started talkaboutit.org. That is uh, a website you should go to to learn what to do in case someone has a seizure. If you have epilepsy or seizure, three million people. I mean, nothing against MS. Three million people, okay? Get your numbers up and then come talk to me, okay? 
3 million people are dealing with epilepsy and seizures in this country. In this country alone. So um, uh, I don't know what the numbers are. <laughs> By the way, you are somebody who knows how to deal with it because that is yes. the type of energy that actually gives of her course. strength. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Are you kidding me? You're feeding her right This now. is, by the way, m- my proudest thing is my kids will see someone in a chair, see someone with crutches, and go, well, what's going on? Hey, what happened? Up? Yeah. Don't, don't, if you're That's watching awesome. this, don't, don't peek and then look away. I get that enough as a, someone people recognize and they're like, <laughs> oh, I think he goes to church with us. I'm like, I don't go to church with you. I don't go to temple with you. We didn't go to high school together. And by the way, I say that with that attitude because when I do go, I'm an actor and they go, no, no, that's, that's not, not it. it. That's not it. <laughs> the worst. Yeah. Trust then to, me. Then you have to convince them. And now you're listing your credits. Exactly. And it's like, it's like you worst. asked to do it. <laughs> it's so bad. It's like a job for me. Oh, my God. It's the worst. But anyway, the sympathy, not the sympathy, the understanding of everybody's got something, man. Yeah. Everybody's got something. I'm yes. trying to lose weight. I've been losing weight. You look amazing. Uh, I'm on my way. Nice segue, Mr. Professional Don't Talk Don't say that guest. because then I'm going to pick up a pizza on the way home. I, I can't, <laughs> right now I can't hear amazing. I don't want to hear amazing. Uh, but, I, but I take it, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You, um, you that's, uh, weight is something you struggled with for, always? Always. Always. Yeah, always. I mean, I look back on Felicity days and I'm like, I mean, yes, I was 19. <laughs> I mean, you guys look at when you, you were, were 19 years old. I was 19, 20, yeah, 21. Yeah. Holy snot! Yeah. Were you on the first season too? Because I've never actually seen an episode of Lizzie. <laughs> you worked on the show and you didn't watch well, the show. I probably saw the ones. That we, 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 yeah, I guess probably well, back then. I don't that's really remember. Crazy! <laughs> You're so embarrassed right now. Nope. <laughs> Fits so um, well. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so I was in the first. I was in series regular, but I was in the first episode. Episode. When you, they they went to the, the pilot, you were in. The, so you're established from the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. But you and you were uh, uh, Scott Foley's roommate on the show, if I remember. So in that loft. They were my roommate. So oh right, it was your loft. It was my and they loft lived with you. It was the only way. So here's what happened. <laughs> Matt and and JJ sold the show. Your best friend sold a show. You're a struggling actor. I'm living with JJ at the time. We went. We had a couple apartments together and whatever. And I'm like, dude, I'm on the show. I don't care what it takes. Mm-hmm. They were in no position to hire me. You sell a show. <laughs> You're listening to the people that are paying for that show. And I said, no, we have to come up with it. We have to come up. And they were like, you're too old to be in college. You're not a college-age guy. I said, okay. But then I was begging and pleading. And as a struggling actor, I was selling fruit. I was doing this. I was doing anything, anything I could. Anything you could. Waiting tables, whatever. And they were like, wait a minute. What if that? I said, what if that character become? So that's why I had these crazy schemes every week. My character, Sean Blumberg, Greg Grunberg. It was very similar. They well, were like, you're such a character anyway. Why don't we take that and pull from that? And that's how it happened. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you, your character Dude, had the coolest. We got to get it so you're not switching cameras you while you're me hosting doing the show. <laughs> it's distracting. No, it's not distracting at all. I'm just like, God, oh, you're I doing would love it to all. Not do it. Yeah, I, would I love know. To not do it. Um, um, uh, Is that remote? It's Bluetooth. Yeah, it's it's Bluetoothing the iPad right now. As you, so cool. Look at that. Well, and then you can jump on your Instagram on you. So good. <laughs> wow. Uh, oh, I love it. Your character, the set, the loft set was like my favorite set. It was such a cool, it was almost yeah. a whole stage. Yeah. In yeah, that and warehouse the loft studio. And those stairs that came down. It was awesome. So think like about the kitchen story, was though. underneath the, lo- the loft. Who can afford that in New York? <laughs> Nobody. It was the friend's apartment all over again. It, it was, it was like, the friend's nobody apartment. Nobody could afford this place. So the story was that my grandfather passed that down to me, and the only way I could afford it was to rent out to students. That's wow. how. That's why they lived with me. And the dynamic was great. I mean, I remember I did the documentary. I that, I, no, I was that. there for that season. Yeah. The whole thing was – we did that for budget. You remember that, I right? Know. They wrote that episode. <laughs> they wrote that episode because we needed a – it was a pattern budget thing. If you remember bottle episodes, it was like everything has to be. And then what? This is this was and now the it ultimate. Was cheaper because we shot it on video. We shot it on video, but then the unions got wind of it, and yes. they were like, "No." And Mike May had to shoot. He was a camera guy. He had to shoot it's like Super Eight or something else. Yeah, and I had to stand behind him, like I was riding on a motorcycle. Yeah, I was like, they wouldn't let me hold the camera. God, I just I've totally forgot about everything. We used to have to build New York Street out in the middle of the road and everything oh, before yeah. moving to the studio lot. Yep. I forgot about all of that. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, On that street. We used to have to close the street. It was a cul-de-sac but, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> that's really funny. And that's then we right. would build the fuck Because we had all the facades. Like, we would stack them up in the parking and lot And I believe we went door. to Party City, just like that's you did. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's right. Amazing. I remember. I can't believe you're bringing it back for me. I forgot now. about it till talking to you and thinking about it now. Remember, we put trailers on that street sometimes. Yeah. But 
you're so right. They, they it was like storefronts. They would wheel it all out, and all of the, the <laughs> sidewalk was all carpet. Yes. Oh my God. That's <laughs> but they would crazy. set dress it and light it, and at night it looked amazing. And then when we turned to the Disney Disney lot, it was in the back corner. They had that, that one, yeah, yeah like one sided. Yeah, that yeah. one sided street. God, yeah, that's so crazy. That's all right. Crazy. So Felicity, you were you had just done Hollow Man when we were yes. hanging out. You just done that. Yeah, and no, you're like, I'm doing this movie with Joey Slotnick. I was like, that's awesome. Because yeah, I knew yeah. who he was. You're like, was you know who he is? I was second, like, yeah. Second movie I did with Joey. The first movie I did with Joey was called Dinner and Driving. And that was um, uh, Larry Trilling. Who remember, if you of remember course Larry. he used to write, produce, and direct. Yes. And Larry and I co-wrote. Lawrence Trilling. Lawrence Trilling. Me. We co-wrote <laughs> and produced. He directed I Starred in Group Sex. Which is oh, a no movie? Shit. Don't Google that because a lot of other things come out. <laughs> I don't. What could it be? What could it be? But it's it's. One, I, I honestly, I'm so proud of that movie. It's it's a romantic comedy set in the world of a sexaholic recovery group. Oh, and it's, that's it's so that's funny, genius dude. And torture at the same time. Uh, Josh Cook, uh, Odette, Annabelle, mm-hmm. uh, me, um, uh, Tom Arnold, Henry Winkler, like an oh, amazing wow. cast. Yeah, James Denton, uh, a bunch of great people. Danya Ramirez, like great, great. Kim Whitley, Lombardo Boyard. I'm going to get them all. Okay. Well, then, Rob Benedict. Rob Benedict. Oh, my God. He was on Felicity. Robert Patrick. Yes. Benedict. He was on Felicity as well. That's right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> all so the you, names. Your memory is pretty good, actually. Because it was like, it was all clerical work back then. You remember it was like all yeah. working in the production office and everything? Right. It was like, yeah, whatever. So, yeah. And and I was, I was, you know, you're a sponge at that age. Like, I had just moved to L.A. Yeah. You know? From? Like all, from New York. And I was working in TV in New York on Saturday Night Live and and oh, Conan wow. and stuff. So like I had I wasn't like oh lights ooh. <laughs> right 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 but, right. But the LA way was a different way of doing things and and where where are you from? Upstate New York. Oh okay. Where like uh, like near Cooperstown Ro- area? Near Rochester. Oh near Rochester because you know Cooperstown up there. Are you a baseball guy? Baseball. Yeah. Dude, I told my oh, son. Oh, basketball. I remember that. You basketball. Were basketball. I, I was in basketball. I was. I was. But ba- baseball, I mean, that's that's all we do. And you, Cooperstown, I mean, do you know the story of that of that whole thing? Like this guy. Why it's in Cooperstown? Well, but, no, no, no. Cooperstown Dreams Park is this guy. I mean, Cooperstown's oh. there, but then this guy decided, I want to take these cornfields. It's almost like Field of Dreams. And he... He built the most incredible place you can imagine for kids. Short oh. porch, which means not very hard to hit home run. And all the kids would play there, and just so many home runs were hit, so many dreams were made. Oh, wow. And they were all 13 years old. It's such a great – I have a movie that I want to do in that sort of in that setting. But, I mean, Bad News Bears obviously was the best. But, th- th- anyway, <laughs> that whole – upstate New York – uh, Otsego or Otisaga, Lake Otisaga, which is right there at Cooperstown. Uh, there's a bunch of, there's all of those ones. It's the best. Winnipesaukee? It's there the too? best. <laughs> like, where where would you guys go around here? I mean, you know, like Arrowhead's not the same. Big Bear's not the same. No, there's nothing with that kind of feel. I but that's why we that go up to the mountains, though, just to get out of town. Like the ones that we get in her up in the nature really Do you stay up there difference. at all? No. I mean, a few hours. Yeah, yeah. It's great. But it must be so much fun to f- drive up there. It's great. Mm-hmm. You're gonna find out. You'll see. I know lots but I, of other lots of people you probably know. Um, oh really? Up. Yeah. I a lot mean, of film people. A lot of. A lot of creative people. Okay. A lot of creative people. I mean, if, I, if there's room for my car after you guys have made it so famous. Okay. Okay. Why Let's don't you do? A, why don't you do a show there? That's an interesting idea. If because, somebody wants to produce it, let's do one. Because at Pierce, like I, I walked around, you know, you, you've been there, I'm sure. The Pierce where? College. Pierce oh, College. Oh yeah. You know, you the, know that that Carson Supercar Coffee. Sunday. Yeah. Supercar Sunday. Um, just walking around, talking to people, it, w- it wouldn't be a live thing. It wouldn't be a stream thing because you want to cut out a lot of crap. I mean, there's like a lot of conversations. No, it's a four-hour stream if you do that. Yeah, yeah. but to to get bites on people and their cars and and you know to walk around like if, if the three of us walked around together, you know a lot more about a lot of these cars the facts of these cars that I do, but the personalities, oh my God. No, I agree with you. It's one of those things that you got, it's it's like when Letterman used to do the thing with Rupert or Borat, the totally. same thing. I feel like we'd get away with it for a little bit and we'd have to put so many in the can because the moment we got out, nobody would ever talk to us again. That's true. <laughs> once once they heard how we were talking about them. all the same people in every show. That's true. All around. They buy new cars, but it's all the same people. You're so right. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, it's like we'd burn our little gimmick. Well, after uh, we're off the air here, I'll, I'll share my couple of car show ideas that I have. Oh, I love it! It's really fun. Um, all right, Felicity, Alias, Lost, Heroes, Heroes was huge. The big, biggest show in the world. Yeah, yeah, it was. It huge. was. Yeah, 
Save the cheerleader, save the world. Yeah, and uh, Matt Parkman. I played a mind-reading police officer. Did you watch the show? Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) It's so bad. But it's not that I have an issue. Forget all this. Here's the thing. I saw every episode of Lost. Okay, well, I was only in one, so thank you very much. I think I, think I played the credited, pilot of I think the plane. You're credited for three because they must show that scene. No, no, I was in three, but okay. but it's not the same. I mean, the first, the pilot was two episodes. That's and then what I was I, in a flashback. Oh, that's true. That's not fair. That's true. And yeah. I was in a flashback with Emily DeRaven at the airport, where she is about to get on a plane, and she's and I'm like, she's nervous at the airport. I'm like, well, what's going on? But it was the same episode where. Hurley's character saw all the numbers. Yeah, that's remember, a great episode. And it was like running through the airport. And Four, seems, eight, 15, 16, 23, yes. 42. <laughs> oh my God, there's something wrong with you. No, I told you, I remember the weird shit. No, 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 no. <laughs> Never you seen have, Star Wars, you but I'll so tell you You have so much the, more going the, wrong with you than you do. Long. Just FYI. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you put her to shame. Oh my God, who remembers the numbers? Who doesn't remember What's the wrong numbers? With you? Push the button, John Locke. Push the button. Are you so me? funny. That's so funny. <laughs> but but um, anyway, because of that episode, they couldn't cut it down because every one of the numbers and every one of the things he sees were important. Mm. So my scene was like, it's a bonus feature. I'm like, all right, whatever. I got paid. But um, <laughs> Did you have to go to Hawaii? Because I heard they shot every frame of that on Hawaii. Or except for when they had to do something in London for somebody who was out of town. Yeah, but my flashback was at L- was at the convention center. They faked LAX at the convention center really? here in LA, which I was like, "Oh my god, I get to work here." I don't know if you go to Hawaii. Just going I went to Hawaii, dude. We shot that in the cockpit because I'm the pilot of the plane. I wake up and we shot that in a tree. Oh yeah, you give so much exposition because you're like, "Oh, we were way off course. They're yes. looking for us in the wrong place." Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's the whole castaway part. Yeah, of it. And he yeah. Survived. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're looking oh for us God, in the so wrong good. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh God, that's right. So I it was, am. It was the, actually important. I am the worst pilot in Hollywood history. Yeah. I crashed my X-wing, which you wouldn't know about because you didn't see it. Um, oh, I, that sucks. Yeah, I I crashed the plane and lost. Yes, you did. The show would have been called Hover if it wasn't for me. So I mean, also I, couldn't you have told them when you were off course? Like, did the radio go out as well? <laughs> Must have. <laughs> Must have. They're looking for us in the wrong place. Yeah, I never found Why? Never Why found didn't you tell them where, where we are? Didn't seem important at the time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was working another little bottle of booze. I was trying to get the <laughs> thing off. Flight. That's flight. Yeah, it wouldn't open. Oh, my God. That's so oh, funny. That's amazing. So, um, and now here we are in your uh, dining room. Dude, I'm just so impressed with you. I'm so happy for you. Oh, like, you're one of the please. nicest guys. You were so nice. We were just PAs on Felicity, and you don't have to be nice to the PAs. It's really nice yes, when you, you are. Yes, you do. You don't have to. Some if people you, aren't. If you wanna, if you wanna live a good life, you I wanna be nice to everybody. Are you kidding me? And I appreciate you saying that, but th- you shouldn't have to say that. I guess maybe other people need to know that it is something that does need to be said because it's not always that way. I know. I know. And so thanks for being awesome. Oh, uh, thank you, man. Thank you. I and the fact it. that you would like when we would run into you someplace, you whether you really remembered me or whether you just pretended, you were always really good at no, it. No, no, no. I'm really good at you. it. Look, <laughs> there's certain people you remember, certain people you don't. A lot of people I do, you know, they just kind of fall their their face and their name, they just fall to the floor because you're like, all right, I guess I'll they'll have to remind me again. I come on. I mean, the, you meet, the le- yeah, the na- just the letter J is easy to remember. <laughs> no, but to- you remember people. You, you meet people in life, and you go, man. I'd be a nice person to have be friends with. Oh, you know? no, Thanks, really. Buddy. It's true. That's, That's amazing. True. And now, Henry Winkler, <laughs> who's probably the best guy in Hollywood. The nicest man. We both know him as well. The oh, my gosh. Henry and I are really close. And he um, remembers, as you know, everybody's name second day on the set. He's like, hey, what's up, Wilbur? How you doing, <laughs> wow. Steve? Hey, Barbara, how's the hip? I mean, he remembers. In all fairness, he's worked with all these people for 60 years. No, so. <laughs> I mean, that is true. That's some of them. But, you know, he he has this, I don't know what he does. He'll, he'll like, look at somebody. It's like memory technique or whatever. Yeah. But he remembers everyone's name. And I'm, and uh, we do Comic-Cons together occasionally. And I'm like, you're not doing it here. You can't do that here. There's no way. I but mean, he does do it because we used does. to go to Comic Con. He was with us with the children's hospital crew because yeah. he was the guy from the hospital. Oh, that's right. He owned the ho- he was Mr. Children's or that's whatever. That's right. So he was always that with was us, and I took show. that picture of him and Shaq together. It was him and Shaq. It's amazing. Oh, but no uh, and believe it or not, he remembered Shaq's name. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Amazing. But he did do all that, even backstage with like the worker people. Yeah, yeah. He just it's that's who he is. He's the sweetest. The sweetest. I auditioned. He should be your for a TV show. dad because you guys are both like okay, really nice. Okay, so that's what I'm getting into. You're reading my mind. Oh, so there was a show where it was a father and a son, and I, this is the best audition I've ever had. 
And I go into the audition, and I didn't know. I knew it was a Henry Winkler show, but and I was reading to play his son. And I walk into the room, and he's there. And I was like, awesome. oh, my God. I mean, he's a hero of mine. And I, I'm like, oh, my God. First time meeting him. Yes. <sighs> and, I, and I'm like, well, first so time meeting him. you didn't know how insanely nice and gentle he was. <laughs> no. But, and I just lied. Because first time I met him was when I was... 10 and visited the set of happy days and that's, and met him and i was like that's a whole different thing <laughs> and scott bayo god rest his soul oh no he's not no dead. he's not dead well Career he's wise. hollywood dead yeah hollywood dead. um uh scott bayo said to me <laughs> rest his soul. i said he goes what do you want to be and i said i want to be an actor i was 11 or whatever and he goes don't ever stop if you want to do it you got to do it just keep and i'll never ever forget that dude whether he meant it or not he never saw me act or anything and it was just a great thing and scott to his, it was just so nice. Everybody was on that set. And I remember legend being, that you went to Happy Days. I went to was Happy it, Days. Uh, Paramount Lot, probably, right? Yes, Paramount Lot. My parents were friends. My parents' uh, gardener was friends with somebody on the set or something. Uh, they knew like, we loved the show. There's Arnold. There's the Cunningham's living room. Like yeah. it's really right there. We saw an episode which they wouldn't let a they wouldn't let a ten or twelve year old into those screenings now. I mean, into those. Tapings. Oh, you're too young to sit in the audience. Yeah. yeah. But then we, we we did and and we got to go back. Oh, Tom Bosley. That's how it was a Tom Bosley connection or whatever. Anyway, meeting meeting everybody. It was like hi, Aaron Moran. I was like hi, hi, and Scott Bayo. I was like oh. God, he's so great, Amazing. and met him, and he was just as great as he was on on camera to me. Like he was so sweet, so nice, and I remember meeting Henry. But okay, so now cut to years and years later. I'm an actor. I'm reading for the role of Henry Winkler's son. Go in, walk in the door, and it's a callback. But I I didn't know Henry was going to be there. I walk in, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. hi. <laughs> it takes your breath away, right? <laughs> like, hey, how are you? I said, I I, I didn't want to be a fan girl, but I was like, hey, I'm I'm a fan girl. <laughs> And he and he, you know, Henry's like, oh, thanks, that's so nice, so nice of you, thanks, nice to meet you. And I'm like, I really mean it. I mean, you're. He's like, oh, come on, please. So, um, whether or not he meant it, he was like, I've seen you before. You're very good. I'm like, oh my god. Anyway, they go, uh, okay, let's do the scene. And he's sitting there, and he goes, wait, 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 wait. You know what? Here, give me the sides. He's gonna now read you're with gonna me. read with Henry. now I'm gonna read with Henry. F and Winkler. And I'm like, okay. And loving it. <laughs> he goes, I don't know this very well. Please forgive me. Like he, he, t immediately, that's what a generous person obviously does is say, I'm going to suck. Puts it off on, don't worry about this first pass, whatever. That's all we did was one pass. The scene is probably three pages. We went on for, I think, 12 minutes of the scene supposed to end with, you know what, Dad? Fine. If that's the way you're going to be, I'll be in my room. And, and, and I walk away. I say that, and I go, I'll be in my room. And I turn to walk away, and he goes, where do you think you're going? He's completely off book now. That's mm -hmm. not on the page. And I turn around, and I go, the room that you built for me? And he goes, oh, so now it's not good enough. I'm like, no, I like my room, but I also like my privacy. And we are going, and it's toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He's smiling as he's doing it. He's having a blast. Best audition I've ever had. He grabs my head, gives me a hug and a kiss on the cheek. It was like the greatest thing. Schwimmer got the job, but ah, greatest, <laughs> just the greatest experience. He never forgot it. I reached out to him when I was doing group sex, and I said, I really want what you was to it? play. Paul Bearer? What was the movie? No, no, it was. Uh, I'm trying to think Schwimmer and Winkler together. Yeah. It's it was, good it was, casting it was, it was, from an appearance. It was a show. Now, if you watched, have you seen? Oh, it was a show. It was a show. Have you seen the, the Friends reunion? Yes, we just watched it, it this weekend. So good. Great. Remember uh, Schwimmer going, I, had the, I, I just had come off the worst experience I've oh, ever had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Schwimm, by the way to Schwimm's defense he is like the most brilliant dude and, and always wanted to write his own stuff he's been producing and directing you know yeah. so his mindset was like and, and, the, and the material wasn't bad and it wasn't Henry obviously but it was probably you know the network they dragged him along and they hold us as actors for months and months and months and you don't get paid and you're yeah. like Wah. so that was probably what it was I guarantee it but <laughs> I was like, I was watching it, and Elizabeth was like, "Didn't you audition for Ross?" To me, uh, and I'm like, "Yeah, but they already had Schwimmer. Like, uh, he's the king, man." And uh, but that was that was the show they were referring to. I amazing. loved the Friends reunion. I thought it was great too. And there, and and a couple of my friend Lisa's old friend of mine. And, oh, that's awesome. I mean, I was. I, they all deserve it. They all deserve it. I'm telling you, they, they're just the best. I totally agree. That yeah. show. Uh, 
God, it was good. Yeah, it was it was good. But the thing is, it, it it's just as good and maybe better with my age, with our age. Like I don't know how to describe it, but it holds up so well today that the, the generations are discovering it again right now through yeah. Netflix and everything. Yeah, and I'll tell you, and it's like coming up again. Too. Yes, and I'll tell you, my kids, my boys, they're adults. I mean, my you know, my youngest is seventeen, so seventeen, twenty-one, and twenty-five. But they love it. Yeah, they love it. The writing is solid. It's so, so solid, good. and the guest cast that come through the doors are amazing. I love that they brought in Larry Hankin. It, the moment they did, yeah. it, I go, "It's Larry Hankin." I know. Our neighbor in Venice, and I was like, "It's Larry Hankin." from everything ever he used to be your neighbor in venice yeah he was their neighbor yeah that's well not literally all right, yeah, i know but on the show but yeah 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 yeah, yeah that's so funny he, and he looks the same kind of he's one of those guys so i did a um a pilot another dream of mine was working with um don rickles he played my grandfather oh whoa I've had Lockhead. Some, nice job yeah i've had some incredible incredible experiences but that was like another one where i was like don You've been, you've looked like this since you were 15. Don Rickles is the same like Larry Hampton. They just, that's the look they've had. You look at the old picture, the old videos from Carson and stuff. Like, it was a little darker on the sides, but he looked exactly the same. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly the same. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So funny. You follow all that stuff too, the li- like the like the the Carson stuff and all that. Yeah, are you watching the history of late night? I'm yeah, sure of you course. Are, are you listening to the podcast? Asking. No, not yet. I, I haven't either. I don't listen to podcasts. I'm not. Know, I'm not good at that one. That one I'm thinking about listening to. Me too. But like, how do you do that? I got to figure out my life to go. Oh, how am I now become a <laughs> podcast guy? I know. Well, you could take the audio from this. How many episodes have you done of this? A lot. And you this you is, really want to know? Yes. 374. Okay, so that's 374 episodes of podcast you could put out right now. No, we are. Oh. I mean, it goes out on podcast. Oh, it does. Well. Okay, yeah, so uh, there it you goes go. Up you have a pod- You just said I'm not a podcast guy. I've never listened to one, including oh. ours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I listen to like one half of. You know what you'd find interesting, Part which I, I just discovered, is these scripted podcasts. Some of them are really good. They're like an old radio show. Those are great because it's like a book on tape or something. Yes. Yeah, radio show is great. I love yeah. that. I love that. I love that anything thing. where you know actors are kind of whatever. I don't know doing their thing yeah and i'm a visual medium kind of guy i mean look at this you know i mean the podcast thing I, we were doing didn't yeah it didn't inspire me. it wasn't i agree i agree but 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 if you with sound design some of those podcasts those scripted agree. podcasts are very cool the storytelling they do with the sound effects is yeah. pretty cool yeah 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 um all right we have gone way way long I and know. i know that i, know. I, I gotta this, get you out of here this from your own standpoint you, you have to check out this all right now your is this audience, your book yes i wrote this book all right Ooh. lex so, medlin do you guys know that lex no is he calling because he's watching? He might be calling because he's watching. That's so funny. Um, uh, this is a this is a, a graphic novel that I wrote. It's called Dream Jumper, and uh, my son had a dream one night, and and he woke. He was so vivid, and he couldn't go back to sleep. And and I was putting him back to sleep. He was twelve, and I'm like, well, tell tell me about it. And he goes, it was like it wasn't my dream. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, it was me, but I was jumping in and out of my friends' dreams and saving them from their nightmares. Whoa, what a great concept. And that's this right what here. What a great Dream idea. Jumper. So uh, we, it's a scholastic book. It does really Whoa. well. Two, two, that which, means it's two in the books. book fairs. Oh, yeah, it's in the book that's fairs. That's huge. Yeah, it's great. It's great. So you I sign more of these than I do headshots at Comic-Con now. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, who did your illustrations? Uh, my partner, uh, Lucas Turnblum, he wrote it with me. I met him at Comic-Con. He had a following from a cartoon series that he did, or a um, comic book series that he did. And he was, I said, has anyone ever done this? And he's like, oh, it's like scanners for kids. I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, kind of. Yeah. And scanners was awesome. Yeah. So he and I took it and ran with it. He took a year of, of doing all the illustrations. So we had a finished book that wasn't colored, uh, colorized, but we, and then we pitched it to all the, uh, the Random House and all the, all the companies. But this was, Scholastic was really is really cool because it gets into the kids' hands in the schools. Like, it, that. Yeah. They also do Harry Potter. Like, they're a big publisher, but they are, they're great. And their editors are great. It's... My point being is, like, for a kid to know about a book for their parent to ask for their parents to buy it for them is different than, like, in the school program. With like, All right, there's only X amount of books or whatever, and here's one of them. And yeah. You pay, like, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's yeah, pretty it's cool. very cool. I loved being in that whole thing. I mean, I, and we Me do. too. Yeah, I loved, like, when I was a kid, like, looking through and then marking out. Yeah, the yeah, numbers. Anything out of the routine, you know? But I loved, like, telling people, like, you know, 2594 or whatever the book. Remember, they all had yes. a number. Yeah, yeah, you fill out the little thing sideways yeah. at the end. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. My favorite thing. Um, uh, please come back. Please oh, come my back God. I would love to. And I'm coming over to your studio soon to come check it out. You, you both should. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Yeah. Um, it's, no, I mean, like, next week. I yeah, mean, it's, like, no, it's right up the road. I'm there every day. Uh, it's, my, it's my office. That's, that's where I am. And right now... 
Um, we have a pretty cool guy recording at the building. Um, awesome. Yeah, Morris Hayes, who is keyboard player and producer for Prince. Um, is at the building recording. Whoa. Yeah, he'll be there all night. He's uh, <laughs> he's there all night. Uh, <laughs> Try the meal. Great guy. Great guy. You guys don't have a kitchen. Oh, yeah, of course we do. Do you really? We have everything. Oh, that's amazing. I can't wait to see this. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. All right. Um, let's see. How do people follow you? How do people keep up with uh, you? At Greg Grunberg everywhere. Or if you want to watch some some really cool stuff on YouTube, Greg Grunberg channel uh, on YouTube is really cool. This These shorts that I did. but Everything's but, your name, basically. Yeah, everything's my name. Yeah. On um, Instagram, uh, Facebook, there's about 17, but one of them is real. <laughs> good, good luck with that. Uh, but on Twitter, it's at Greg Grunberg, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank you for being here, brother. Uh, I, I mean, it means so the world to me. It was so cool please. to just kind of catch up and stuff without all of the criminy of Comic-Con and all the other guys. I know. I love that there's – I mean, how long, I don't know how long we went, but this felt like 12 minutes. Hour just, and a half. This is awesome. Over an hour and a half. Uh, love you. We love you. I love you. We all love you at home. Please love one another. Yes. And we'll be back on Thursday with Rob Cordry. Oh, you my God. You know him God. from Children's Hospital. You know him from Ballers. Gosh, everything. He's been tons of stuff. And now from, isn't he on? Uh, now he's the host of Top Gear. Yeah. Top Gear America. So yeah. That's what's going on. Cool. We'll see you all later. That was really hard. Man, that was hard to do. So good. I love it.